Welcome back, Spartans. We're here at beautiful Brooklyn Boulders, and today we are talking to Damali Elliott. She's a wonderful woman who takes girls who have no hope, gives them hope, and then launches them into the beautiful fulfillment of their lives. So today I have Colonel Nye. To my left, I have Dr. Johnny Waite and wonderful Joe back from Japan and Miss Marion behind the camera. So um, yeah, listen to this and then stay tuned with us and we'll have a chat about it afterwards. Hey, we are in a secret location with Damali Elliott from Petals and Bells. It is a foundation? It is a, it is a nonprofit organization. A nonprofit yes. organization that she started in New York? Yep, in New York City. Nice. And it's to help? It's to help young girls that are living near below poverty to give them exposure and access to mentors yep. and to experiences that elevate and inspire them. And, and when did you start? I ago? started seven years wow. ago. Yeah. So to do anything great, it takes like 10 years, right? It takes so much time. <laughs> I like how you dropped your so arm. So much time, people exactly. That, people usually, we all see mm-hmm. things and we're like, oh, that just happened. But they don't see like below the iceberg, the tip exactly. of the iceberg, right? It's like 10 years before anything really starts to happen. So and you probably don't make roughest. any money doing it. And no. <laughs> it's the roughest 10 years I it know. is. I can't, year 10, I can't wait to see what that looks like. How, um, how many times have you wanted to quit? I mean, you could be honest. Yeah, no, I want to. Um, I've wanted to quit thousands of times, you know, and I've thought about quitting thousands of times. I think, um, but I haven't stopped working even in those moments. I would slow down sometimes, but I'd never stop. But I think about it. Yeah, you know, uh, we did a podcast with a guy named Stephen Pressfield, and he said uh, it was finally refreshing when he woke up one morning and realized that every day you face resistance. Mm-hmm. As soon as your eyes open up, right, whatever it is you do, you're going to face resistance. And once you come to terms with that, and it's like, all right, I'm going to wake up. We're going to battle. i got to deal with it exactly. and, and get through my day. Exactly. But I want to quit every day, too, so I, I, I'm with you. And then he get an email that's so inspirational. Oh, my God, I had cancer. I'm doing the race. I'm sure the yeah. stuff you see is unbelievable. Absolutely. A lot of our girls are, like, super grateful for the experiences and the opportunities that, you know, they've had. And a few of them who are now in college actually come back and, mm. like, mentor the girls in our summer programs, which I thought would happen when I was, like, you know, 75, 80. But it's, it's happened. So I'm like, yeah. Yes, this so means. those were those were like twelve or thirteen year old girls when you first started. Exactly. So that's keeping you going. Yeah, that's right? exciting. It's like, yeah. oh my God, they're young women now. You were girls, and now you're young women. And have they said? Uh, and then you'll walk us through the program. But have they said that tra- that was the moment? That's the thing that transformed them. Um, they said that there are many different things. You know, we've yeah. worked with a lot of young ladies that. It's like there's there's a moment, but the moment's different for each of them. So for some young girls, young ladies, it's taking them like four weeks in the program to realize, oh, my God, you know, I can, you know, be this person that I dream of. And for other girls, it's taking them like a year and a half just to open up to their mentors. Um, I do have like a young lady that I thought was perfectly, you know, fine. And I thought, wow, she's just such a giver. She's so inspirational. She's like the leader and takes care of all the girls. And it took her two years to tell me she was homeless. Wow. So every girl story into you know being more open and kind of identifying with their potential varies so so walk us through it you go how do you find the girls so we literally partner with New York City shelters junior high schools and high schools and then with the shelters of course you know like everyone there is deserving of the opportunity but we still have a rigorous process in terms of interviewing our girls and like giving them an opportunity to apply because I want to make sure that every girl that enters the organization is ready to take advantage of the opportunity And then with the schools, it's the same process. The schools are hand-selecting girls that, based on their backgrounds and their stories, they know need the support. And then we go in, we do an exciting workshop, we give them an opportunity to apply and interview, and then we pick the girls who are most ready for the experience. And then how often do those experiences? It's weekly. Every week? Every week. So 52 weeks? Yeah. So you're missing some girls right now. I am. I am. Yeah. And then you have a team? Or? We, I do. I have ma- mainly a volunteer team, which I'm super grateful for um, yeah. because, you know, not the nonprofit world is challenging sure. and competitive sure. when it comes to funding. But we have about a team of 15 volunteers who help in all facets of the organization. Yeah. And then we also have a board that's great, but I'm the only full-time staff member. Wow. Yeah. And so every week, how many girls go through the program? Right now, we have about 68 girls that are active in the program. Wow. Yeah. 
And, um, and then they might stay a week or two weeks or... No, the idea is that they roll over. So we have girls in the program that have been in the program for six years, five years, okay. girls that are in college that are coming back. So the idea is that we're on a journey with them instead of having programs. And I'm not, you know, a lot of organizations have programs that are in and out. Like you touch a girl one time and that's it. And so I think what differentiates us is like quality. And so although it's 68 girls, we're like on a journey with them. We know their teachers, their family members, nice. how well they're doing in school and all of Very much different. like a Big Brother Yeah, program. very similar. Yeah. yeah. Big sister. Yeah. And, and so then walk us through what actually happens. Okay. Yeah. So when a girl enters the organization, yeah. she has an opportunity, well, after we do the application process, yeah. then she has an opportunity to do, well, her parents actually come in for a parent interview yeah. so that we have a better understanding of who the young lady is, and then she dives right into the program. And our first, our program begins with like a three-day workshop where it's really about expectations and their responsibility as new members to this family in this organization of Pedals and Bells. And then after that, we jump into a hodgepodge workshop, which takes them everywhere from, they do rock climbing, which is like the uh, physical you know, element, yeah. to actually doing introspective workshops where they're dealing with like guilt versus blame and learning about self-love for the first time. Because they feel guilty. If they have a tough situation, they're feeling guilty about that, like they did something wrong. Exactly, right. exactly. So like learning to let go of all of these different things, you right. know, learning about emotional wellness and mental health. So it's kind of like a hodgepodge at the same time we're taking them to plays and museums so it's really that's the first program really just to kind of lock them into all the excitement and then after that we get a little bit more tailored so like we have a health program that focuses on mental health sexual health and physical health where they're doing trapeze and they're doing laughing yoga and Uh, so and then in all these things they're always an introspective element built in for them to just identify what they're feeling and how they're doing and how well they're like you know um, doing in school and how much they're giving to themselves and others around them and how well they respect themselves and also it's like a bunch of different things built into an entertaining curriculum to capture girls and um, the outside providers the trapeze yeah. or the yoga they provide that as a they, donation no not always you right. know um, the very amazing organizations do yeah. and we oftentimes get really great discounts if not you know the entire you know operation is gifted to us sure. but yeah well, let me know. I mean, I have, uh, obviously, we have Spartans. Yes. So girls, uh, you probably shouldn't show them Spartan right at the beginning because they might not come they back. They might run. <laughs> exactly. Don't leave to Molly. What are you doing to us? But, but, uh, we, we could get you some connections in New York, too, that will that Yeah, that would be awesome, help. especially for our older girls. Our college girls, they'll, they'll be into it. Yeah. 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 They'll be ready so, for it. So, um, you know, we focus on uh, success and whether you're a mom, a monk, a business person, and... Uh, what are the attributes? What what gets a person from uh, where they are to where they want to be? And so you're watching that happen real time, right? Because you, you're you're pulling people from uh, not the bottom, but but tough situations. Absolutely. And then you're seeing them take off. What is it? What what do you? You've got this little petri dish going on, right? Yeah. Of, I think it would start with possibilities for me if I'm just looking at the girls and what I've seen over the years. Like when you see a young lady who actually doesn't believe there's anything for her. Like she doesn't know anything's outside of her community. She's acting out in school because all of this doesn't make sense to her. And you start to build a new story, then something starts to shift, you know? And so it's something as simple as going and entering into a building being in an elevator and seeing girls say, well, I want to live here before they've even reached the destination is something that's super eye-opening, you know, or watching girls play in a a restroom because it's the nicest bathroom they've ever been to at a restaurant is like super transformational in a way that I I don't know, but I can definitely see the shifts happening for them. So I would say it's about opening up, you know, that window and that door and the idea of of, of what's possible. So that would be the starting point for them. Yeah, so, so uh, once you know what's possible, then you've got to figure out how to implant this idea that they can achieve that. Exactly. So how do you do that? Exactly. I believe that's where the mentoring comes in, and a lot of the organizations that we work with in, we work in, like a lot of one, the demographic of the girls that we're working with, a lot of them are African American girls and Latino girls, and we have like maybe less than 10% is like, you know, European American and then other ethnicities that are coming. We have girls from Guinea that are new to the U.S. So 
a lot of the times with the mentoring, it's finding women that also look like them that are in these really great positions. So we've had partnerships with TED and Google and American Express. And so seeing women that look like them that have come from similar neighborhoods that have made it this far, they're kind of like, well, I didn't know that was possible, you know, because these women aren't in my family. They're not necessarily, you know, in my community where I can touch them and speak to them. But now I have this person that I can say hello to and they know my name and they're acknowledging me and they're saying I'm smart. You know, all of those little things really begin to make a difference. Um, Typically right now we start and do a burpee break. Uh oh! Like, it's time to do a burpee. A couple I can, burpees you know, in the name of empowering girls, I can do a burpee. <laughs> All right, cool. We'll take a break. We'll do some burpees and we'll come back. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. Burpees suck. <laughs> they do. I'm winded. Can you tell? <laughs> I can tell. So, so the girls see what's possible. How do you then motivate, or how do they get motivated to then to then charge life? Definitely, I think one of the key factors. Our programs are super intimate, so we have like no more than ten girls, you know, in a workshop. Mm-hmm. And so, with the counselors that we have, we're very specific about highlighting their talents and their gifts. So that's one way that we kind of like reel them in and just like motivate them in terms of what what they bring to the table and why they why they're here and what makes them brilliant. And the other is resilience. Like resilience is something that they have, but they're not even aware that they have. But now, kind of bringing it to the forefront and explaining to them the definition of resilience and like we actually in our summer program we did a challenge course a a trapeze challenge course where they had to face some of their like fears and in those moments they were asked like well what are you like what are your dreams and like if this were your dream like what would you do like and they would go for it so just having the understanding that like yeah they're they're going to face resistance and things are going to continue to be challenging but instead of just looking at things in the small window now you have this huge world that's opening up for you and and and, and look at how tough you are. Exactly. Right? You've, you've gone through stuff that exactly. most people uh, don't don't have to go through. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen studies that um, where they took uh, school children and they told one group, "Hey, you're really smart," and they took another group and said, "You guys re- work really hard." And the group that works really hard sticks with it, mm. but the group in their mind that says they're smart when things don't go right, they quit. Yeah. Because, right. Doesn't make yeah. sense. I'm supposed to be smart. Absolutely, and so, that's that's so true. So yeah. so true. Yeah, so so not every one of them is motivated. What do you do with the ones that aren't motivated? We kind of hold on to them a little tighter. Yeah. yeah, there are a few girls that, yeah, it doesn't. Like, some of them are honestly angry. They're upset. They're angry um, yeah. for a multitude of reasons. And for those girls, we literally just, like, go in a little tighter. And so, like, for example, we have a lot of competitions and incentives built into our programs. And so we'll make sure that we, like, really encourage them to participate. And when they do, like, and they win stuff, like, that kind of opens them up a little bit as well. And they win opportunities or they win experiences that allows them to feel like they are, like, achieving something within the organization. Yeah, does it build momentum? Yeah. Do you you see that? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, some people just aren't motivated, right? I mean, no, and, I mean, unfortunately, like, no organization is perfect, and I definitely don't want to place a picture around our organization like it is because we've had to, unfortunately, release girls. That's what we call them when they're, like, not showing up, for example, and they're not sure. really interested yeah. in it, you yeah. know? And for those young ladies, um, I've had young ladies come back two years later, like, sure. apologizing and asking if they could, you know, come back to the organization. I've had that at races, too. Ah, <laughs> I'm, I can imagine. <laughs> they, they like, I'm ready now. They're mad, and then they come back exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly and so even there's a let there's a lesson in that because for one um we hold our girls you know at a high level of we, we expect great things for them sure. despite where they're coming from so once they enter into, into the organization they have to you know adhere to our play, rules play at and, that level exactly or, so if they don't you know we can't just keep them you know there's a message and letting them know like when you give your best, you get the best. But if right. not, then unfortunately, you're not ready for the experience. And there are too many girls waitlisted that are waiting to come into the organization for us to, you know. Yes. You know, so I'm a big believer that adversity is the road to success, that um, everything that can go wrong does go wrong, right? Uh, you could sure be does. born to this great family and have uh, all this great stuff. But actually, I would argue that in some cases, that's a disadvantage. You've uh, you, you're going into situations where the girls don't have a lot, right? They're disadvantaged, and um, but yet they're coming out. They're, you're seeing uh, light at the end of the tunnel, and so are they. And, and they're coming back six years later. What could we learn from that? 
for the people that aren't as um, unfortunate. Absolutely. Like, like to make them successful. What, 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 could, what could we take away? What do you have? One of the most amazing things that girls have taught me is to yeah. be, resp- my girls have taught me, is to be responsible for the energy that you bring. Right. And so for me, especially doing this work and being faced with so much adversity myself and being told no all the time, actually working with them and seeing the the brightness like they have so much great energy and they're so happy and they're so ready it actually reminds me that I have that within myself too and that when I'm entering a room and I'm entering a meeting to really just bring that and kind of like let everything else go because after all the challenges that they're facing I have never faced and most adults that I know and interact with have never faced so if they can walk in you know and be homeless or not have certain things and just be ready to learn and be super excited then we all can bring that to the table so that's like one major thing that's a big one that so so i call that frame of reference you know you change your frame of reference like, absolutely like if i'm carrying a bag of cement up a mountain i'm miserable well it could be worse absolutely right? absolutely so I'm, I'm with you there exactly it's like why not be grateful that i can carry this cement right yeah. and i can i have the ability to bring it up exactly because yeah. others can't right yeah. so the other thing would be that they are, they absolutely know how to like, their resilience is incredible. They know how to fall down and get back up. So they're just constantly falling and getting back up as if it's nothing. And I feel like as an adult, I've lost that. Like every fall, it's like, it feels a little harder. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to try again. And they're just always willing to try again. Like there's nothing in them that says no, for the most part. We learn, uh, I think we learn helplessness. I've heard that on a podcast oh, wow. before. Where where you think about it, right? Yeah. Like, like if, if we were living in the old days, mm-hmm. you and I would be uh, on a horse and carriage right now, and the wheel breaks, and we get. But exactly. now it's like I can't walk a block with that bag of groceries. Exactly. I can't walk up those stairs. I need an escalator. Mm-hmm. Right. But you're seeing they're the doing opposite. it. The right? opposite. They have no victim mentality right. at all. And in fact, it's like they don't they don't want that. You know, yep. they see they they feel their strength and they just keep going. And I'm like, wow, I need to keep going. I need I need to be just like that. Yep. You know. Yep. And also, we were all once like that. So it's like, how do you tap back into that yep. space? You know. Yep. And the third one yep. would be the fact that they are just limitless in terms yep. of their creativity, their ideas, and their dreams. Dream big. Exactly. Dream yep. so big so 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 big and like fill in the pieces after but we definitely don't want to take that away from them and that kind of just opens me up to thinking about like what what like is the creativity truly flowing am I really like hitting home with doing the most that I could possibly do with these programs and these organizations and you know inspiring them so so don't just to recap don't complain right because people have it a lot worse exactly bounce back because we used to do that exactly. every day, right? In yeah. the old days, it'd be like, man, thank God the sun came up. And then um, number three is dream big. Absolutely. So big. You are awesome. You are Thanks awesome. Thanks for doing what you do. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure. And we are back. I'll tell you what I loved. I love when she said resilience is something they all have, but they don't even know they have it. It's just an innate. It's innate. And it's innate in all of us. And so when I, some, I, was, with, I was with somebody last night and they said, oh, my God, how do you guys do all these ultra marathons and everything? I said, everybody at this table could do them. Yep. Just got to do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Talked about learning helplessness, though, right? Learned helplessness. Yeah, because the children fall down. They just get up. They, don't, they have no other choice. They don't know any different until they learn to cry around two. You know, they, they <laughs> cry, and you kind of look at them and say, oh, they're going to cry, not cry. And then you encourage them not to cry, and then they jump right back up, right? But it's, it's so funny when you see people, like the people that frustrate you, and you just want to shake them, and then you realize they've learned to be that way. Right. And, and I love when she said that, that a lot of these kids, they needed to be shown a new story because the story that they know about themselves and they've learned about their life and the environment they grew up in and whatnot isn't an empowering one. So you're able to show them there's another way to do it. And it's from a coaching standpoint and um, hypnosis, that was my background, was you had to figure out what people believed and, and realize that until you change that belief, they weren't going to change their behaviors. And so here's a, she's showing them that you can actually believe something else and then we'll show you how to put the behaviors in to backfill that. And it makes a huge difference. Can, can I please say just one ecology analogy that you just brought to mind? Okay, uh, guys, there's let's, a, let's, one, let's one, vote. Okay, one. 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 okay, I get one. I get one. Okay, so there's this amazing ecologist, Brock Dolman, who's like a naturalist neologist, so makes up his own words, right? Okay, um, okay so do you guys know what a watershed is? A watershed sure. is in the topography of your mountains where a raindrop falls. Anywhere where that rain will come in, that's your watershed. 
right? So what Brock Dolman says is it's the instead of restoration of the watersheds in nature, he says it's the restoration of the watersheds of your ecosystem instead of your ecosystem. He Come said, on, how cool is that? that? So if you're he said that. If, if you're watching this on YouTube, Does anyone understand if you're watching that? this on YouTube, <laughs> you watch just rewind thirty later. seconds, five or six times, till you can figure that out, and then you'll get it. The maybe, restoration of the, anyways. No, I think it's brilliant. Oh, <laughs> it's they're so supportive. Anyway, okay, she's doing an awesome. She's doing an awesome. No, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, this, well, this is important work. She's, right? she's, she's teaching. Work. She's teaching girls how to be women, right? She she and she talked about it that they've come in about ten years now. She or she's at the seven year mark, right? But some of these girls have come in, they're young girls, and they've come back, and they're women. She's, she's releasing them onto society, into society, with the tools they need. By the, by the way, all of us listening, like, everybody should do their part, right? If you, if you see young people, that's what we love, helping kids, right? Yeah. It's Spartan racing, but we could all do our part. I like help. helping kids. You know, it's funny. In one of our other interviews was um, with uh, Jeffrey Upperman, and he said that... Um, that as a community, right, we all have the responsibility. It takes a village. And he said, no matter how good a parent you are, your kids are still spending more time with strangers than with you, between right. teachers and doctors and friends and uh, other parents driving to soccer or whatever. Mm. And it is really important that you make sure you're surrounding your kids with good people, but that you're a good person for every kid you're around. Oh, that's that's right. a great way to put no, it. No, yeah. I think we got to do our part. Yeah. And, and you too, Zephyr. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay. No, but okay. And she says, "Be responsible for the energy that you bring." Yeah, that was fantastic. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's a good point because, okay, for example, I was in the airport the other day, and this woman's like, just so curmudgeon, and I just saw this wake of misery that she left behind her. It's like the person at the ticket counter, the blah blah. She's just putting everyone in a bad mood. And do you think that's gonna help what, you? What'd and, you and, do? Oh, I I, I went behind the wake and I was yeah, like, I love you. You're you such a great ticket. I've, I've been dying. I've been dying. No, no, no. Been dying. You like, you this. Tried to do this. What should she have done? She should have gave. Oh, no, no, come on. Oh. no. She should. Fire it up, Buttercup, <laughs> and go to iTunes, YouTube. If, if you're wondering what that inside joke is, go to Spartan.com/podcast. Go back and watch some of our other ones if you missed it. That was one of our fantastic guests a while ago. Nene Myers. Nene Myers. Yeah, exactly. great interview. Great interview. Uh, so, yeah, interact with us at YouTube, at iTunes, at uh, the Spartan.com uh, website. Uh, we're always there, hanging around, waiting for you. Inspire people, mentor people. Come hang out with us. Oh, there you what go. What are you doing? Oh. oh <laughs> Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Spartan.com.